G'day, I'm Ash. So I was streaming yesterday, and this is one of the matches we had very early on in the stream. It was an interesting one. I thought I'd show this off on channel. Now, you've seen hundreds and probably hundreds of videos by me about the A7D. I love this thing to death. In fact, I've challenged myself to get a thousand kills on the thing, and I will achieve that. Mind you, grinding the American Tech Tree, I've got like five aircraft left uh, on, on the Americans, and then I've got two German aircraft and four Chinese aircraft left. So, you know, there's about 11 to 12 aircraft left, I think. But regardless, we're in Hokkaido. Probably one of the earliest maps that you would see jets on more typically back a few years ago. I remember when there was just Meteors and P-80s and F-80s flying around, and you'd have an aircraft called the Sea Jesus, also known as the Sea Meteor, running around and absolutely stomping on people. It was the combination of low speed, good turn fighting, decent cannons. You know, it was a good aircraft to play back then. Mind you, that was 2015, probably 2014. And those days are long gone. But every time I see this map, I think of those times when we were up tiered in a propeller driven aircraft into that kind of bracket. Okay, we're going to climb to the left this time. Now, I usually climb a little bit to the right, but a7 has fantastic pair of gun pods, and they do a hell of a lot of damage. Even with 500 rounds of 30mm in each gun pod per se, you know, you've got plenty there to deal with, especially if you're going head on with something. So, again, climbing, and we're just sort of observing what we see. Now, I know there's a dot flying down to my right there. I can sort of see it flying along. Where is it? There it is. I spotted it for a second there. It's disappeared. I've noticed the spotting system in War Thunder has been pretty inconsistent lately. You could be right on the tail of someone in a prop fight. There's the, uh, the dot that I saw. Uh, poor little <laughs> French thing. French premium bomber. I tend to leave those alone in my A7. I used to go for them all the time. The thing is, they'll die to something anyway. It's just better for you to go after the fighters that are more potent than the actual bombers themselves. And again, this is just... Purely the early game. We're at about 3,000 meters right now, doing about 690 kilometers an hour, give or take. And we're just sort of perusing around to see what we can see. Yak 38, two Yak 38s, a Harrier, mm, an, an F5. Those F5s have been out in plenty as people are trying to grind for their F5s. You know, the, uh, the, the MiG 28. There's another subject to be said about the MiG 28. I'm not going to discuss that here. Anyway, we've got missile lock, or we're trying to lock on this hunter. Now, is he going to necessarily run out the way? No, he's not. But, you know, here's a MiG-17. I could easily just gun that MiG-17. I decide, you know, it's it's worth the missile. See you later. That's two aircraft down in under 30 seconds. We've got more to come, and that's where the whole entire team comes through. That A7D down there is absolutely getting hit on. There's an A4E as well here, but we're going to take after this MiG-17. Again, ample targets. They've just taken off. They're rather slow. No hits, no hits on that one. I'm going to push through, so we can hit that Yak-38. There's an SC-7B directly on my 6 here. He's locked on to me, but... No, that doesn't necessarily matter. He doesn't have any missiles yet. <laughs> it's quite funny, the new SU-17 gets R-60s. Is it at 10.0? I have a feeling that thing's going to be prominently destroying mid-tiers when it comes out. But anyway, this SU-7 is trying to do something. There was a missile that just went off at me. That's perfectly okay. Squad mates, everybody is dying here. It's just a massive sort of shit show. And normally I don't really, you know, partake, but I just couldn't aim today. So I'm going to do the cheeky thing. I'm going to waste my ammo on something that was already burning and kill something that was probably someone else's. Complete and utterly dick move. That's okay. The Harrier is coming directly after me now. Rolling around. And this thing is incredibly heavy. It's not necessarily a turn fighter. It doesn't do particularly well in that regard. If it didn't have its air spawn, I'd argue that this aircraft would just be mediocre. It's probably why it still has its air spawn. Its battle rating hasn't gone down any further. I was, I, I was expecting that, but this thing is utterly broken. <laughs> if you've seen my pre previous videos, you'll understand why I like this thing so much. It's easy to play, and it's somewhat of a... I had such a easy shot at that gun. Ooh, this all nearly hit me. That's okay. He's out. That MiG-21 is out. That's good. We don't want a J-7-2 running around. Now, there's a MiG-17 and an SU-7, so pulling directly up. Disregarding anything that anyone else had said. There's a bunch of teammates left, but th that won't last long. They'll start falling like flies here in a second. There's two down. There's three down. The team is starting to fall apart. 
Got two returning to base, and that guy's going to get absolutely nailed. There we go. Unfortunately for the friendly there, we couldn't necessarily save him. That's okay, we're trying to pull around right now. The MiG-17 over there is on fire, the Hunter is running away. The SU-7 is coming directly for us, and that proves a bit of a problem. If we didn't turn around in time, which <laughs> wasn't the case, we managed to absolutely nail him, and that is perfectly okay. Now it's three versus two currently. Aviate A just shot down the MiG-15, and we've got this Hunter. Oh, I'm now out of ammunition because I screwed up that shot. Should have been able to do that. That's okay. That F-105 takes out the FGA. Uh, and that hunter is now down. Unfortunately, Jaguar launches a missile at him, and, well, that's not going to be particularly nice now, is it? It's two-on-one right now. Jaguar versus myself and the AV-8, which has just landed. Now, hopefully he takes off in time. I'm not going to directly fly towards him because that will give him some time to take off. Unfortunately, Jaguar's quite lucky. I was hoping to bait with him and play around with him a little bit further. But this is where things start to take a turn for the, the worst. I've got an ace. You know, I've got five kills here, and I want to win this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the Harrier. And particularly, watch what he does, and basically commentate on that. Anyway, he's taken off. So, let's go. Unfortunate that I died and I ran out of ammunition, but there's nothing I can do about that one. Jaguar's coming head down towards this Harrier. And, you know, the Harrier is quite good. Now, I don't own the AV-8A, but I do own the most broken one, at least recently, with SRAMs and the British version of the Harrier. That thing is a ball of fun. This one, I'm not entirely sure on, although it does get different missiles. That's okay. We're now entering a turn fight, and the Jaguar and the Harrier are now engaged in something I call uh, catchy catchy kissy kissy. Because this Jaguar uh, can necessarily outturn this thing, but it doesn't have the low speed retention like the Harrier does. So either way, they're basically poised for either success or for uh, a, a massive loss. Now, I'd say the Jaguar A has more of an advantage here, provided he doesn't bleed all of his speed. He tries to get a shot off on the Harrier, but doesn't necessarily get there. Pulls away. The Harrier is trying to turn on the inside path of this guy. See, look at this. Rolling around. He avoids the shells, luckily. You think the Harrier would actually crash? Nope. The Jaguar's nearly about to crash. And this is where we notice a shift and change, right? He puts off a shot. Come on. Ash wants to win this one. Ash wants to write home to, to whoever. A little bit of ground fire on that Jaguar A. And I quite like the Jaguar A. It's a fun jet to play, especially when you bait missiles out of MiG-21s. But it's also a pain in the ass to fly, which is why I don't fly it very often. There's Harry still turning around. Man, it's just a massive sort of sit here, wait in suspense. Come on. Where is it? Is he going to get a shot on? Again, this spectator camera is utter garbage. It really doesn't do anything for anyone. Now, that being said, though, the Harrier has engaged his vertical mode. As you can see there, his thrusters are pointed directly at the ground. He's turning the aircraft around slowly, and he's trying to get a decent shot off at that Jaguar. As you can see here, he is sort of just feathering it around. I didn't really realize this at the time. He was like, oh, he's quite slow. He's going to lose to a head-on. Yeah, he did lose to a head-on. Why he committed to a head-on like that, I don't necessarily know. This is where I was sitting in my seat and a live stream absolutely just miffed about the whole entire situation. Are we going to lose? Are we going to win? <laughs> it's it's too close to call it at this point. Even though I've done my part on the team, it's about time someone else did that uh, for, I guess, the end of the results here. And as you can see, the enemy tickets are now bleeding quite fast. There is no real option here, unfortunately. We won, and that is the end of the match, as far as I'm concerned. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Now, it's not often I get five kills and then have to watch the last person in our team fight the last person on the enemy team and see who can come out on top. Oftentimes, that was something that was quite interesting, and that guy had only played a few matches in his Harrier, per se. So, it was interesting to see, and pretty interesting to follow, I guess. Now, I'm going to go back and play some more A7D, and hopefully I'll get to a thousand kills before they remove the air sport on this machine. What a match, eh? Anyway, that's about it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. Stick around, there's going to be some more varied content on the channel, probably some other game stuff. YouTube has a habit of hiding the content I do, and it's, it's bloody hard work. Anyway, my name is Ash, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.